What if you could step out of the day-to-day -day and see your business from a whole new perspective? Welcome to Above the Business, where we empower you to rise above the daily grind and embrace a higher way of business ownership. It's time to build your business by design. Welcome to another episode of the Above the Business podcast. My name is Bradley Hamner, your host. On today's episode, we take a different look at small business and entrepreneurships, and that is around accepting payments. Today's guest is Jeff Main. He's the founder and CEO of Pay Proudly. Now, accepting payments may not be something that you've ever thought about, and you didn't even think that you maybe need to think about. But whether it's your current business or maybe your future business, I think you're going to learn some things that maybe will help you avoid some mistakes that you may have made and certainly things that I wish I would have known several years ago. I think you'll get a lot out of this conversation with Jeff Maine. Jeff Maine, welcome to the Above the Business podcast. Thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate you having me on today. Excited to have you. Well, we always start with background and origin story. I love hearing people's journeys of how they got to where they are, because I think there's so many lessons that we can all glean from that. So why don't you take our listeners back and tell yeah. them your story about how you got to where you are? Yeah. So um, I appreciate that. You know, it's, um, I've been in, the, I'm in the payments business, right? So we work with business owners all across the country in their electronic payments. And uh, I tell people all the time, they'll ask me, how did you get into this business? And so, you know, back in the 90s when I was in college, I never would have said that I, here I am going to be sitting here still in the payments business, but it's where I'm where I'm landed and it's the space that we know uh, today. But basically, you know, I was at St. Louis University studying finance and uh, I got a phone call one afternoon and, and I was always an entrepreneur. I mowed lawns through high school and college and always looking for that different internship and, you know, always looking at what I wanted to do when I graduated college and knew I wanted to be a business for myself, <clears throat> excuse me, but um, I got a phone call from a, from a friend who was in the business out of the, out of town. It was a family friend and he had some leads and wanted me to go run some leads. He had lost his sales guy in, in St. Louis as local sales guy. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but I started running these leads for him and selling, you know, back in the day, it was the little Zon Jr. boxes with the detached printers and, you know, and, uh, and, and when I graduated college, you know, I started doing that for a few years of just kind of running leads for him. And when I was finishing college, I'll never forget, you know, I had a, I had a job offer with a big consulting company, um, and I was going to be working in PeopleSoft and HR PeopleSoft traveling around the country. It was a sought after job, very fortunate to have gotten it. And I'll never forget the conversation I had with my dad. He, um, he looked at me and he said, you know, Jeff, you've always wanted to work for yourself. He said, if you're going to take this job and you're always going to make just enough money to never take the risk to go do it. Mm -hmm. He said, you can always go get this job. But he said, if, you know, he said, you should move home live with me. I've taken care of you this long. What's another few years and start a business and just, just go see if it's for you and uh, try to own your own business while you don't have anything to lose and, um, and no risk really. And so I took him up on this offer and that was the summer of 1999. And I had dabbled in this payments business. So I kind of understood it. And, uh, I had some contacts and so I, I, we got into the payments business and, you know, since then, since 1999, here I am still today in the payments business, we've built some businesses, we've sold some portfolios, we've built an ACH company and sold it. Um, and, and just over time change, you know, gotten into different vertical marketing of, of going heavy in certain industries, had partnerships that I've gotten out of and, and still in some and, and now, which, you know, all that we've done and morphed into pay proudly. And, you know, three years ago, we were just sitting around the table, we were kind of at a transition spot. And, uh, and I said to my wife, you know, we were just talking and we were talking about our give backs and what we were doing. And I said, you know, the two big, big problems in our industry today is I said, people, business owners don't have clarity around payments. And I said, and the other thing that we, that was just important to us is we wanted to build a business with a give back feature to it that just 
you know, feel good, you know, and, and really be intentional and do it from the ground up. And, and that's how we started pay proudly was with, you know, and so our mission reads bringing clarity to payments. And that's what we're doing. We're bringing business owners clarity that they've never had before in the payments business, really being more of a consultant to them. We're not going after thousands of accounts. We're being very intentional about what we sign and what we're doing and, uh, and really work in hand in hand with our business owners where they know us and we know them. And then the second part of our mission is we're building a business with a give back. And from the first dollar we've made, we give 10% of all of our revenue back to nonprofits. And we pick those nonprofits through the businesses that the, the businesses that we sign, they have, they give, they tell us who to pick. So mm-hmm. we're supporting causes that are important to our business owners. And, um, it's a great thing. And, um, and, and we're only able to do it because of them. So, you know, obviously we give the credit to our business owners because if they don't sign up with us, we're not able to do that, but, um, everything, you know, it's been great. And, um, and here we are building another payment processing company. So. Well, I'll, I, I may, depending on how it goes, I'll, I'll tell a couple of stories that I have around payments that I actually have never shared on the podcast and contextually, it just hasn't come up. But it does lead me, before I get into that, it does lead me to this question that I have for you. On the podcast, we really, years ago, the podcast, before we flipped the name just a couple of months ago, but for years, it was named the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. And that was just the name we came up at the time. And so it kind of gave this denotion that we were talking everything around leadership. Well, we certainly talked around leadership But really, everything we discussed was around the idea of small business and entrepreneurship. So it's really a small business podcast. And so we've talked about, we have people on that we talk about marketing, we talk about sales, we talk about, I just got off um, with someone a few minutes ago around um, just performance and like in creating culture and like, how do we get Mm -hmm. better? And so we're, I'm looking at this, like almost a prism of business and like, what are all of the things that it it takes to run a successful business. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, like one of the things that does not get talked about very often, like at all, is how do you accept payments? I mean, people right. will say like, look, uh, open a bank account, just uh, do something and, and then let's get on to the other things, which is like what you're offering marketing and sales. And it just is a right. like passed by thing. So yes. that leads me to my, my question. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I, I think it's one of those things that business owners don't want to talk about it because they don't understand it. And as us, you know, business owners, we want to understand every facet of our business. And if we don't understand something, we kind of just want to stray away from it. And um, and and there's a lot of confusion around payments. And there's and when I say confusion, how do I accept payments? What are you know what are the fees I pay, and why do I pay those fees? And are there better ways to take payments? And are there ways to reduce my fees? And there's there's just all this information out there around payments, and um, and, and business owners, you know, they don't know, and that's where we are so intentional about the clarity, but. I I think it's just, it's not easy information to get your hands on. And, you know, a lot of business owners, I'd say the majority, they take that easy route, right? They, they're starting a business and what they just call square and they set up an easy route, right? Or they are in their bank, like you said, and they're setting up a bank account and they, and they look at their bank and say, Hey, do you guys do payments? Oh yeah. Yeah. You just fill this application out, but the banks are selling a one size fits all solution. Mm -hmm. And, and that's really not the answer. And when and when they have questions and they call their banker and ask them, the banker doesn't know the answer. So they bleed them over to an 800 number that they have to sit on hold and go to these call centers. And, and it becomes where I'm, I'm just not going to think about it. I'm just going to pay it. And I'm just going to move on because I don't have a professional. I don't have somebody that I can call that knows the answers to my questions. Mm-hmm. And, and it becomes very frustrating. And that's what we wanted to change. Um, there's a lot of feeling around our business of like, you know, that used car feeling, right? Like I just, it's icky. It's not, you know, it does, it's not a great feeling. It's just, I don't want to talk about it. And, and we want to change that. We want people to say, no, I, I mean, I've, we've got all the clarity we need. We know who to call. If we have a problem, they fix it. If we have issues, they tell us where to go or how to handle it. And, and we, so we want to change that narrative with our customers. 
you know, there's, for some of you, depending on the space that you're in, this initially can feel on the surface a topic that maybe like if you're an insurance agency owner, potentially you're already processing your payments through something that's kind of corporate approved. But here's what I'd share with many of you is that I know that many of our listeners, because many in my own community have a second business completely outside of that or a third. And so this can become something that if you're wanting to desire to build say a holding company, you actually happen to use a uh, word portfolio. So like, that's actually one of the things I'm doing is been a kind of holding company, a portfolio of businesses. This actually becomes something that you have to think about. Okay. So the default mechanism, like you said, it becomes square, you throw up, maybe PayPal, right. Or, yeah. or, stride, or maybe you know, the big stride or something like right. that. You go to the big names, you do a quick Google search and it's just like, okay, okay. whatever. Like, it's again, let me just do it and move on. And I don't even like, except know what the fees are. And I just, it is what it is. I'm just move on right. down the road. So why do you think that that is dangerous might be not the right world, but maybe not the, the, the smart business move to make? Well, yeah, they don't know any different. Right. And so they, and, and it's the path of least resistance. It's easy. And it, and, and it, and, and they don't know better. Um, you know, and, and, and I will say Stripe and Square and these solutions, they have their spot that we refer businesses to them and say, hey, this is better for you. And, and here's why. Right. But the majority of the businesses that we deal with, you know, are they think, you know, for example, we'll use QuickBooks. Right. People think well, I use QuickBooks. I've got to process through QuickBooks. Well, that's not true. There's a lot of integrations to QuickBooks that, that, you know, we have a fully, you know, fully integrated solution to QuickBooks that actually we can send out invoices to customers from your QuickBooks without you doing anything and give customers a cash and a credit price um, that we can actually change the price of your invoice to, to, to get your credit card fees back. And as long as you're doing that in the right way, you can do it. But a lot of business owners don't know those details. And mm -hmm. that's where we come in and, and, and where we can really help. Um, and there's a lot of point of sale systems the same way. People think they're not integrated with other processors, but they need to ask the questions that, you know, conversations are free. I tell people that all the time, you know, let's talk, let's see what you're doing. There are certain situations that we can't help you. And we'll be the first ones when we find out that that's the situation you're in to say, eh, there's nothing we can do for you. But we also might give you some information that you can go back to that solution and, and get a better rate or, you know, process a different way or change something that qualifies your corporate cards for, for a lower interchange category. There's a lot of things that go on in this industry that people just don't know what questions to ask to get to where they really need to be. Are you an agency owner looking to grow your revenue, increase your bottom line, and better manage your taxes? Club Capital is here to help. Club Capital is the largest accounting and advisory firm for insurance agents in the country, providing monthly accounting, tax strategy, and CFO services. Way more than bookkeeping and your everyday run-of-the-mill tax prep, Club Capital is focused on providing financial and tax advisory services that help you plan and forecast your agency's performance. Their financial dashboards and agency forecasting tools help you better understand your agency's historical performance, create and measure future targets, and see how your agency compares to your peers around the country. Imagine what it would be like to understand the impact to your bottom line when deciding to hire a new employee or forecast the impact rate changes or commission rates will have on your business. With over $200 million in tracked annual revenue and $140 million in tracked annual expenses, Club Capital has the data and the team to help you make better informed decisions for your agency. They will help you turn that back office stress into the backbone of your agency's success by giving you the tools to take your agency and your leadership to the next level. Visit club.capital today to book a solution overview with one of our business consultants. Club Capital, way more than a CPA firm. Ambition is the first step towards success. It's time to level up your agency. And Coach P Consulting will help you do just that by using the same strategies he used to sell over 700 life insurance policies in 2021 alone. Now, this is not your regular one and done type coaching. 
You'll get personalized coaching two days a week, every week of the month, and you'll get a live look behind the scenes of his team training and an office that's performing at the highest level. There's a reason Coach P Consulting is the fastest growing coaching company for insurance agency owners in the country. Coach P will train your team alongside his own and show you the exact steps they are taking to achieve chairman circle, exotic travel, and multi-line presence club, and be one of the few agents to be selected to have a third office. So whether your goal is to be at the top of your local market or amongst the best in the country, this training will give you the strategies and the tactics to get there. For just $250 a month, you'll get high-level coaching each week from someone who is already getting it done at that level, and his strategies work, and it's time to put them to work for you. Sign up at coachpeakconsulting.com and get your first full month for free when you mention the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. You know, um, if you think about it too, look, I'm just going to use a roundabout number, um, 3%, like a 3% yeah. fee. And you talk about when you start doing a volume, that becomes substantial money over a, over an annual Absolutely. basis. Um, that really could go right back to the bottom line, period. Like Absolutely. right back to profit. Do you do and help maybe somebody with, now I'm kind of getting into dollars and cents, just a little bit yeah. of it, but maybe to help somebody evaluate that and say like, look at what you're like, actually what it is. And if you shave that off by switching the payment processor here, I mean, that is money that goes straight to your bottom line. You just instantly become more profitable. Yeah, we have a free system that we take statements and um, and we we throw them into our system and we can turn around and give numbers back to a business literally within 10 or 15 minutes of saying, hey, here's where you're at. And we're going to qualify all those cards and interchange categories. And, you know, a lot of you know, the, a lot of people don't want to show you a statement. Right. And, and so we can address that real quick and just say the reason in our industry, we need to see a statement is because when you look at your credit cards in your pocket, if I pull out, I can pull out five credit cards right now out of my wallet that I can pay you for in your business, the same product, but all five of those cards, you're going to pay a different fee on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because all these different interchange categories, you got American Express business cards, you got personal cards, you got reward cards, you got debit cards, you have HSA cards in the medical world. You have all these different cards. And then based on how you take them as a business, it qualifies these cards for different categories. So if you want a true apples to apples comparison of where you're at today, we have to know the mix of cards that you're taking and how you're taking them. Mm -hmm. We can get all that data from your statement. Um, the, you know, these credit card companies, they... They pay people to try to make these statements very confusing to the where the average business person will not understand them. Yeah. Um, we we understand them. That's what we do for a living, you know. So, um, and we can go through and say based on this exact activity, this is what your rates will be. And when we do that over a two or three month period, most businesses are doing the same type of business month after month after month where, you know, they're, they're taking the same type of cards. They're doing the same type of business. Every now and then we'll have restaurants or certain businesses that'll take, you know, they'll do a big corporate event on a big American express corporate card and it'll throw their rates out of whack. But we can always, when they ask that question, Hey, my rates look off this month. We can normally pinpoint that to a situation that doesn't normally happen and say, Hey, Here's something that happened and, 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 oh yeah, I did do that event and it was a $15,000 charge on a corporate American express charge. Well, that's going to throw things off. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so we're, we're looking for those details and we need to know those details to really give you a true, you know, comparison. Anybody that would give a business a, an effect or if, if they said, Hey, we can sell you this without knowing those details, they're guessing, hmm. you know, it's just, flat out because how can they possibly know the mix of your cards if, if they haven't seen a statement from you they don't yeah. now yeah. we can make a very educated guess based on business type and location and you know we have a lot of data we do a lot of processing for a lot of businesses right so we can educate a guess but it is an educated guess so um i <laughs> I'll maybe tell you offline. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I don't want to say who, who, what, 
processing company it was, but I was part of a business a, a few years back that was kind of in the aesthetics uh, world. And so they had already had some payment type processors in place. Well, come to find out they ended up having like, they were like, had, had three different like profiles and they were paying like these crazy fees it, to your point. It was just, it was ended up being a mess. So we go through and we start cleaning that up. But my goodness gracious, it was, they were so difficult to deal with. Okay. And this would have been, uh, for listening audience, it would have kind of been more of like a retail type place, so to speak, not really a retail store, but in the medical type um, space. And that was one of the my first experiences to where like, man, this is a huge hassle, huge hassle. It was mm -hmm. very difficult to get people on the phone. Um, and they seemed to, I mean, goodness gracious, I mean, most companies want to give good customer service. They seem to actually be literally on the opposite of that. Like right. I was a burden to them as a customer that we were calling to try <laughs> to get information and get intel yeah. and try to seamlessly switch where the accounts are coming from and understand the fees, et cetera. And so as, as I started to do this, I started reaching out to the bank, et cetera. And the banker at the time kind of threw her hands up and was like, I don't know, they're all like that. You know, she just threw it out that way. Why in the world is that? How can they operate in such a, and when I say it was over the top, I mean, it was pretty significantly over the top yeah. to where it was such a bad experience. It wasn't like a bad day and I called a person at the wrong time. It was just the way that they did business. Yeah. And, you know, I hear this over and over and over again. And that's why, you know, earlier and I was saying our industry has this icky feeling about it. And I think there's, you know, these companies that just sign thousands and thousands of accounts and the, the serve, the level of service just isn't there. Um, and, and I don't, you know, you and I both know, you know, a little bit <clears throat> product of the times today, the general customer service world has gone downhill in all businesses. Uh, there's certain business businesses today that still take it to that level. Uh, but, you know, that it's becoming fewer and fewer and fewer, unfortunately. Yeah. And, um, you know, we take it very, very serious here. We, we have a person answer the phone, you know, that, that you can talk to. And that person is in our office. It's not mm -hmm. a call center somewhere else. And, um, I tell, I tell people all the time. And at the end of the show, when we're giving our contact information, test us, call mm -hmm. our number, see if we answer the phone. Um, you know, we answer the phone. That's it's important to us because <laughs> what, a, I, what a novel idea. Yeah. I, I have to tell my salespeople and, and, you know, the businesses that are already processing with us is our best business, right? That's it, that we have to take care of those businesses. Yep. That's yep. what we're paying our bills with. We want mm -hmm. to grow and sign new business. Of course we do. And we're focused on that, but the business that we already have, that's more important than anything is keeping that business and keeping them happy. And if you're not, if you're, you know, if our customers are having that experience that you had, our attrition is going to be extremely high. And you know, we don't want that's that. actually a really good point just in general for us to make for, for business is that, <laughs> Hey, we got to get new, every business wants to get new customers or clients. If you, whatever you call them, right. Yeah. They want to get new customers. They want those customers to be worth more. If I can get you to spend this, but I can get somebody else to spend double of that. Okay, great. That's winning. But boy, keeping customers is honestly sometimes kind of like left to the side. And I've heard Keith Cunningham once say like, how big would your business be if you never lost any of the customers you've ever had? And it's like, Man. wow, I would be, yeah. I would be huge. Right. I mean, because yeah. I've never, I, I haven't lost customers. And sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes we look at, churn retention rates as like percentages but the reality is that's a lot of people can be a lot of people yeah. so we we bonus based on attrition um we we want our attrition numbers to be very very low um and um and we take that very very serious and that's all about what do you do for your customers and you know i'm trying to you know we we touch all of our customers quarterly right whether it's a phone call or an email or a mailing or you know or something they're they're hearing from us when's yep. the last time you heard from your credit card processor probably never 
you know? Um, and so we're, we're on that other spectrum where we're really reaching out, really trying to be, you know, in their business where they know us and we're part of it. And, and, and we want to answer those questions. And sometimes, you know, you, you make that phone call to just see how things are going and you open up Pandora's box. But if you didn't make the phone call and you didn't know about it, you, there's no way you can fix it. At least we're giving us an opportunity to fix it. All right. So I got to ask you around one big <clears throat> meta thing that is, it's certainly starting to show up a lot more frequently in the day-to-day yeah. -day things. I, you know, who knows how long we are from this becoming mainstream, but I have to assume that you're at least, you are getting above the business and looking around the corner as to well, where are we going with crypto? When are we going to start accepting yeah. Bitcoin? So like, I, I I don't know how much, like, you know about that. So I'm yeah. maybe putting you in the spot, but like, I, I'd love to know, like where, how far are we from, you know, like in my, in my, in my consulting company, how far am I away from saying like, yeah, I'll accept your Bitcoin? Yeah. You know, it's, that's a, it's a great question. And I do read about it and try to, you know, as a, as payments are evolving, we want to be on the front side of evolving payments and be doing whatever, you know, the next thing is right. Being a part of it. And, and the payment world is changing. And there are some things that we can touch on that, that are evolving in payments and where it's going, you know, and we go to these, I go to these conferences every year and there'll always be a breakout on crypto or on, you know, alternative payments and stuff. And so it's being talked about, um, but I don't, I, in my little brain, right? This is my opinion. I don't see crypto becoming a big, big thing anytime soon until the federal government kind of takes their finger on it and, and says, hey, here's how we're going to tax it. And here's how we're going to go with it. Mm -hmm. Because as long as it's avoiding taxes and avoiding what people want it to avoid, the government's going to keep their finger on it and keep us from going anywhere too quickly with it. Yeah. Um, and so from payments to businesses that we're, we're still a little ways away from anything like that happening um, because obviously the, the government's got to be able to get their piece or, 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 it's, or they're going to shut it down. And so it's, it's very risky on that side of it. I think in the payments world where we're evolving is as banking becomes less and less walking in a bank door you're going to see payment businesses getting into the banking business, okay, and opening bank accounts on the payment processor side, a virtual account, right, that will sit there and say, the second you batch your payments, you start taking credit cards, when you batch, I'm going to give you access to those funds right now, because it's on the same umbrella, and that's happening, Um we will be selling that service before the end of the year um, that, you know, we're going to be opening up avenues and they can, and, and it's the same thing as a bank account. They can hop in there and transfer those funds wherever they want to, but we can give them quicker access to their money, which all business owners are looking for. I should say most, uh, but uh, you know, so that's, it's, they're going to, it's where banking used to sell payments. I think you're going to see payments selling banking. It's going to switch. My last question is kind of around semi, like, where do you see the industry going? Like, um, I'm, I'm thinking about this as really as a consumer, that it seemed like that we were for the longest in a swipe situation. Yeah. And then we went chip and yeah. then quickly it went, went to the, to the Not tap. Topless. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to tell you, it's about a year ago. I, I feel like I'm actually on the, I'm fairly techie. Yeah. And I never played around with Apple Pay, like the double tap at all. And one day I just was like, I got to check this out. So I went in and I added my personal debit card. And so then I was like, all right, let's see how this works. Now that is all I use. And I just yeah. had this situation last night. I went to Lowe's and Home Depot. So if somebody at Lowe's and Home Depot is listening to this, you guys got to fix this. I walk in with my phone because I paid tap everywhere, right? Yeah. But they don't accept it. They don't accept it. So I had to march all the way back out to my truck, get my wallet, come back in to pay. <laughs> it, here's, here's my question. 
I mean, what's next? I mean, that that's where we're at. We're at tap now. Everything seems to be that way. What, where do you see going from there? Yeah, I mean, we all kind of knew it was going to go to the phone, right? Because you walk out of the house and you forget your wallet, but you don't forget your phone ever. So, you know, what's it, you know, what's it going to go to what's next, right? In your, in your pocket, is there going to be a, your keychain going to do it? Or, you know, where's, where are those payments going to derive from? But, but yeah, I, I definitely see it moving more and more and more to, you know, you conduct all your business with your, with your phone because you're, you always have it. And, um, you know, I, I'm the same way. I use my phone all the time uh, because it's easy. And I've got my business cards in there, my personal cards, and I can go between the cards and, and, mm. and there we go. And, um, and, and we're setting up businesses every day for that. It, it's a technology thing with those big companies where, you know, you think about Home Depot and Lowe's where they've built this technology around not having it and the transition for them to go build that into their gateway and deploy new equipment. That's a big undertaking mm. um, for those big businesses. It's really easier for the small guys to get it than it is the big guys. Um, when you, when you think about technology around what it takes to convert, you know, those huge businesses. So, and that's even the chip card, you know, it didn't really hit the States for a long time and it's, it's, it's becoming more and more prevalent now. Um, and, and really it's becoming more and more prevalent because MasterCard and Visa are saying, if you do it, we're going to secure those trans we're, we're going to, you know, secure those transactions more where it used to be the swipe. Well, now they don't care about the swipe. They want a chip or a contactless payment done. Yeah. Makes sense. Jeff, this has been great. I've learned a lot, um, today. I know our listening audience is going to want to connect with you connect with your company jeff where, where would you uh where would you point them to yeah so you know we'd love for them to go out and take a look at our website payproudly.com p-a-y-p-r-o-u-d-l-y -Y. Um, all of our contact information's out there i'm on linkedin you can look me up jeff main uh, my email is jmain at payproudly.com i'd love to get emails from you guys we'd love to you know, give you a proposal with just look at your statements and, and come back and just do a rate review for you. And, and worst case scenario, you take that back to your current provider and you save money on what you're doing today and you don't make a change uh, for us. Best case scenario for you is it, is it helps your business. So um, we'll do that. It doesn't, you know, no cost to you. Um, just give us a call. Well, last question the name of the podcast is above the business. When you think about yeah. getting above the business, you're a business owner yourself, you serve small business owners. What does that look like yeah. to you? Yeah. You know, we're always looking at different ways of how are we getting above the business? And, and actually I was telling you before the show, we, we had a meeting today and we were talking about just business, business readiness, um, really above the business and looking, are we ready for, our next marketing initiative? Are we ready for sales? Are we ready for our next hire? How are we going to train that hire? But being above that and really just, and rating our business. And we're, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to start creating a scorecard based on our business readiness for all these different categories of things that we're doing and let our employees be a part of that. And, and really just to keep our business moving in the direction it needs to move in and and hopefully right eventually one day it'll move continue to move in that direction without me being an integral part of the business on a day-to-day -day basis um and so just you know just really being above that and, and building all those processes and, and putting those into place that's great love it jeff appreciate you coming on my friend yeah thank you so much for having me and look forward to having conversations with your listeners awesome you know, as I mentioned to Jeff on the podcast, we really try to take this idea of small business and entrepreneurship, and I think of it like a prism, and I hold it up, and I try to come at it from every different angle possible. We have a lot of podcast booking agencies that reach out to us and are able to bring us incredible guests like Jeff, and so, but I turn down a lot because I think, how is this going to serve our audience? And so this may, be, may not be a, a topic that you ever thought that you would need to kind of listen to or pay attention to. And maybe some of you, if you're in like a representative of a large corporate uh, insurance company or maybe another corporate institution, 
payments may not be something that, hey, you know what? I don't have to worry about that. But if you were to start a secondary company, now you actually have something you can go back to. So hopefully this becomes an asset in your portfolio that you can come back to and say, you know what? I'm actually going to reach out to those guys that pay proudly. I'm about to start this other company. I don't know this space. I really want to kind of have my hands on it. He's brought up some things for me to be concerned about. I really don't know what that is. I'm just going to reach out to somebody who is trusted that I like and seems to have mentioned some things. So my that's my that was really my hope of today. And I and I feel like that chain, or excuse me, I feel like that Jeff really delivered on that. So hopefully that gave you some exposure to a different aspect of small business you may not have ever really considered. Big shout out to our podcast sponsors. Obviously, today we we're talking about payments. And so, you know, you're bringing in revenue to the business, you're bringing in income to the business, regardless of how that comes in. And but you need to start having, you know, some numbers and be able to make decisions off that. It's kind of what Jeff was saying that if we can get those statements, well, it's kind of similar to with you with your financials and having really clean financials to be able to make good decisions off of is so critical in today's environment, Club Capital can help you do just that. Go to club.capital. You know, in my world, we really believe in building an operating system for the business to be able to grow kind of beyond you and for it to be able to operate like clockwork. Well, but you got to have a really good team to do that. You got to both attract A players to run that operating system and you got to develop them. Both autopilot recruiting and Coach B Consulting can do that. Now, you've heard David on here many times and Alex on here many times, but look, we could have a lot of other podcast partners and sponsors on here, but we wanted to work with the best and we wanted to work with people that we know that are vetted and trusted that do an incredible job to be able to serve all of you. Go to autopilotrecruiting.com. If you want to help on the front side of being able to source better candidates, be able to build a bench, or maybe if you're in a pinch, didn't mean for that to run, but if you're in a pinch and need to be able to bring somebody on, you don't want to make a hasty decision and not speed through the process, maybe skip steps. Autopilot can help you to do just that. Go to autopilotrecruiting.com. And then when you're ready to really start developing them, both not just develop you, but also your team to be a part of that development. Who's to, if you want to develop your team, that doesn't mean you have to do all of it. Coach P Consulting can help you do just that. Go to Coach P Consulting. Dot com. And also, you've heard me say this a lot recently, but again, I think it's important me to be chief reminding officer. And that is that you, if you're going to have a bonus and compensation structure, a place to put all of your sales and keep up with your bonus and put your plans in. So you're not having to do manual calculations. That's not a good use of your time. But you also want it to be an easy interface for you to work in. You want it to be something that your team's going to enjoy. And it's got to be something that's going to be corporate approved and work with your corporate approved CRM. You get all of that and so much more. Customized word tracks. That maybe you pick up from yourself or from Coach P as an example. Go to todayapppro.com, todayapppro.com. All right, everyone. Until next episode, lead well.